preconceived idea uh, of the gentle Thai, the non-aggressive Thai, and the very polite Thai. When you see a Muay Thai fight, the action in the ring simply does not fit the picture you have of the Thai in general. Why do they fight like this? Why do they use their foot? The foot is the lowest thing of the human body. You don't point it at anybody, you don't use it at all. And here, they kick their faces with their foot. The present Thai society has uh, developed out of a uh, long, long history. Uh, our aspirations now is to become uh, civilized on, uh, on the same footing as the European countries, any other country in the world. So we have certain standards of behavior, of living, that we aspire to. And one of these standards is the, is the normal way of life which is acceptable throughout the world, that is the peaceful life. This is nothing modern because we have aspired to have peace throughout the whole history. It happens that our history has been interspersed with great violent periods. Our livelihood is a matter of trying to achieve peace, but at the same time, if necessary, we'll get up and fight. There was always struggle, there's always infighting, and also a threat from the neighboring principalities and states. Traditional weapons of war were swords and spears, but the Thais were also skilled in unarmed combat, a fighting art they developed to be devastatingly effective. This became Muay Thai, the most ferocious and deadly martial art in the world, the national sport of Thailand. Nobody knows uh, how old the tradition of Muay Thai really is. Uh, we know that uh, the Sukhothai period flourished uh, around 700 years ago, but it is much older than that, because in order to become, uh, to get to a peak, there must have been a leader period, okay? So we may well be talking to something about 700 to 1,000 years ago. And throughout that period, that was, it was a formative period, the uh, struggle, the fighting has, been going on continually, we believe. So Muay Thai itself can be as old as ancient history. Muay Thai has been called lots of things by Westerners, but the Thais call it eight-armed combat. Fists, elbows, knees, and feet. Each fighter's hands were bound with knotted rope, which added to the effectiveness of the blows. And in grudge matches, the practice of embedding ground glass into the hemp made for a bloody contest. The ferociousness of this no-holds-barred fighting led to an out-of-hand dismissal of the sport by international sporting bodies and its banning in most Western countries. 
to begin with, Muay Thai was uh, misunderstood as uh, a, a rough, rough fisticuff type of uh, physical exercise. Uh, kickboxing grew out of Muay Thai, as I believe, and you can see what sort of, um, uh, what is the word to use here, um, misunderstanding that made Muay Thai into kickboxing. Uh, the ritualistic aspects were not fully understood. We are now about to witness a Siamese boxing man. Contestants step off the collars and poke their guards by walking about and crouching in a comical manner. They are playing for victory. I think the guards will be on the side of the best left jab. If they make good, they're going with a zigzag. There they go now. A couple of fast boys. I don't know the name, but we'll call them Butch and Spider. Butch shoots over a fast foot to the right here, and then Spider counters and puts it down. As the sport of Muay Thai grew in popularity, training became more intensive. It ranged from the obvious to the esoteric. Here, the boxer is splashing water in his eyes in an attempt to control the natural inclination to blink. Before, there were no gloves, there were no weight classes. A ring didn't exist in the sense that it's used now. Training styles were different. For instance, rope skipping or so, which is a, a very basic daily training of a boxer, it didn't exist. On the other hand, they kicked banana trunks. They lifted weights on a string with their teeth. And these are all uh, old-fashioned, but very good methods of training, which the modern Muay Thai fighter doesn't use anymore. Training may have changed over the years, but it's still as grueling as ever. The rituals that accompanied the preparation for battle were also carried over into the sport of Muay Thai. Tattooing the body with magic symbols for protection is still practiced by some temple monks. Using a two-pronged steel fork, the most intricate designs are tattooed into the skin with astonishing speed and skill.
in Muay Thai and in many other aspects of Thai life. Uh, you have to appreciate that although we are a Buddhist, Buddhistic country, uh, we believe in the teachings of Lord Buddha. Surely long, long before Buddhism came into Thailand, we believed in, in magic. We believed in ghosts and how to deal with these ghosts and good luck, bad luck, and how to deal or how to uh, get, make bad luck good. There's a lengthy pre-fight ritual involved. The first is the tying on of the placiettes, each one containing prayers and inscriptions. The same applies to the Mong Kong, which is for the protection of the head. เป็นนักลบของโบราณเนี่ยก่อนที่จะออกลบเนี่ยเขาจะมีพระหรือเอ่อเมื่ออาจารย์เนี่ยลงคาถาคมอันนี้บางคนก็ภาคพี่หัว
Oran lives in a small village called Nong Ki in the northeast of Thailand, the poorest region of the country. He trains at a local camp which has had the distinction of turning out several Muay Thai champions. The boxing camp is run by Pramod, who is also the teacher at the local school. The camp's also somewhat of a home for stray kids. Oran is one of those strays. Oran like to come to to see in my camp, to watch in my camp when uh, another boxer train. He stand at the front, and then I ask him, "If you want to be the boxer," he said, "Yes." So then your master. Take your mother and your father to come to me. It soon became apparent that the boy's home life was not a happy one. A blow to the head as a very young child has left him with serious hearing problems. He misses most of what is taught in school. Pramod took Oran into his camp. If he live with his family, maybe he not got uh, happiness. So I told Sam to take him to his home. And Sam love uh, Oran. Sam is one of the trainers at the camp. He volunteered to look after Oran and to bring him up in his home. This arrangement seemed to suit everybody all round, especially Oran, who was in the process of training for his first public exhibition fight in the village. Oran is lucky. He belongs to a reputable camp. His teacher, Pramot and his surrogate father, Serm, will instill in him a sense of dedication and respect. If he trains hard, he will be able to make a good living, for a while at least. Others are not so lucky. In a country where much of the population lives below the poverty line, mainly in rural areas, the drift to the city in search of work is inevitable. Bar fights are one way to make money.
Bars like this can be found in night spots all over Thailand. This one is at Pattaya, just south of Bangkok. Once Thailand's premier tourist resort, it's now known for its seedy nightlife and as a place for the US Navy to disgorge its troops on R&R &R leave. Patia has something the Thais are very proud of. Sidiot Tong, the most famous boxing camp in Thailand. Most of them live in a big dormitory, which is situated above the camp. There's about 15 boys training at the moment. It uh, fluctuates all the time. Sun Liam is 14 years old. He's been training and living at this camp since he was 12. He's an intelligent boy and a talented fighter. <laughs> ก็ดูก่อนได้ไปได้ซ้อมเลิกเลิกเสร็จก็ 4:00 อาบน้ํานอนแล้วยังนอนแล้วสองโมงครึ่งก็ตื่นออกมาวิ่งอีกทีโอ้วิ่งสี่กิโลแล้วกลับมาโดดเชือกครับกลับมาโดดเชือก
้แล้วผมมักได้มวยเนี่ยทําให้เราเนี่ยมีใจจิตใจเออเป็นนักกีฬาพอตัวเราทําให้เราเนี่ยรักเด็กด้วยอยากให้เด็กอดอดอย่างอย่างมากินอยู่นอนอยู่กับเราเจ็บป่วยเนี่ยเรารักษาให้ได้เราเราก็สบายใจใครพอตีใครนี่ไม่แพ้ลงมาไม่มีการตกตีนักมวยค่ายนี้ดังที่สุดในประเทศไทยให้มันอย่าอย่าให้หลุดหลุดให้มันลงขวางอย่างนี้นะครับให้ลงเฉียงลงเออเอาดีดีบ้างเอาลองดูดิจับเก็บปัดสันยามส์เทรนนิ่งอิสอิสเพเชียลฮาร์ดในช่วงนี้เขาทำงานไปถึงสนามที่ตำรวจที่ตำรวจซันลิอัมส์ไฟท์เป็นเพียงหนึ่งในหลายที่ในวันนี้The fight start with the very youngest boys, around eight or nine years old, and continue through the night up to the older and more experienced fighters. Sanlian waits nervously for his call. The pre-fight dance, the Ramue, begins. The fight goes the full five rounds, and there's no knockout. s a n l i a m wins on points. There are no cheers, no applause for the winner, just a modest purse. But he's happy. If he keeps on winning in the provinces, he'll make the big time. And Bangkok.
population of over six million and growth outstripping its infrastructure, Bangkok is a city which places almost unbearable pressure on the inhabitants. Despite the crowds, the noise, the dirt and the endless traffic jams, Bangkok still exerts a fascination for the visitor. For the Muay Thai fighter, it can mean fame and fortune. And this is where fame and fortune are to be found. This is Mecca as far as Thai boxing is concerned. This is Lumpini Stadium. Crowds of up to 15,000 jam this stadium night after night. People who come to witness the Muay Thai spectacle and to bet. The Thai character is a gamey character, likes to play and likes to bet. And Muay Thai being so widely practiced and having such a huge following, uh, betting is a very major part of it, it draws the crowds. Only a few make it to Lumpini in the top, and one of the few is a 19-year-old boxer called Nam Kabuan. Nam Kabuan has a winning smile, movie star good looks, and an easy manner which make him a natural with the media and sports fans. He too comes from the village of Nong Ki. Uh, saw Nam Kabuan. He said, hey, Nam Kabuan. And I think he is the hero for, for everyone here. It is hard to be champion. In my camp, uh, in the morning, they must get trained about four hours, and uh, in the afternoon, about four hours. So all day, he will be get trained about eight hours. While Nam Kabuan gears up for his next championship fight at Lumpini, the day of young Oran's big fight has dawned. The first call of the day is to the temple for a blessing. The monks become involved in many of the lay activities simply because they work closely with the community. They are living humans, they are, they are, they are men, uh, and they understand the uh, needs, the thoughts of fellow men. And when it comes to the, uh, the subject of Muay Thai, they also follow the sport and they participate in it, not in the, in, in the sense of actually fighting in Muay Thai.
The exhibition fight has been organized by a local promoter from a neighboring village. By winning, Oran has the chance to earn his very first money. A win will also be a way of paying tribute to his teacher Pramat and his trainer Selm. is fast and furious and exhausting not least of all for the referee whose reflexes need to be lightning fast to prevent any foul kicks when one of the boys goes down when not under pressure from his opponent Oran is under pressure from his trainer The bell goes, 
and the fight is Oran's. Friendly punters share their winnings with the champ. The Thais claim that Muay Thai is the king of all the martial arts. Some years ago, this claim was challenged by the proponents of Karate, Taekwondo and Kung Fu. There was a Hong Kong team of uh, Kung Fu fighters and each and every one lost in the first round. And they went back screaming for brutal and what you cannot, uh, that's not a sport. And they came back about two years ago for a revenge match. And the same thing happened. 10 seconds, 15 seconds, knockouts. Yeah. And they just couldn't understand why. That's all their fancy kung fu stuff, which has no meaning. You see, it's, you don't you don't uh, uh, hurt a tie fighter with that. They all lose, and they are not losing because they are uh, worse technicians or they are. Uh, bad fighters or their technique is worthless. No, it's not the reason at all. They lose because they have no battering experience. They have never been smashed from one corner to the other. They have never been kicked in the face in their life before. While the ties have taken punishment right from the first day from the word go when they train. And that punishment the foreigners are not used to. That's why many of them lose in the first round. They can't take the hammering. There are much more sophisticated techniques than Muay Thai, but they are all games. They are not fights. At Lumpini Stadium, they're getting ready for the big fight. Nam Kabuan is defending his title.
Namkabuan is in peak condition, at the height of his physical powers. But he has a weakness. His facial skin is delicate. It breaks too easily. Blows to the face must be avoided. The fight begins. Then a short, sharp jab with the elbow connects with Namkabun's right eye. The elbow cuts like a razor, leaving a fine but deep incision. The challenger cannot hide his satisfaction. The referee stops the fight. The doctor makes a quick diagnosis. The fight can continue. Now Nam Kabuan is bleeding badly. His opponent has been successful in opening the wound. Sweat and blood mix with the liniment and run stinging into his eyes. The crowd is going crazy as the odds start to go against the champion. His corner desperately tries to stem the bleeding. The odds go up and down. In the final round, the fighters are exhausted. A tense moment until the scorecards are read. The crowd roars. Number one is still the champ. After the fight, and the photographs, and the interviews, Nam Kabun will go to the hospital and have his face stitched. Not for the first time, and certainly not for the last. He's 19, and will maybe fight for another five years. There are over 500,000 Thai boxers in Thailand, only a few will make it to the top.